Hello and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Eat Smoke Drink Rare Malt Edition. So like Rare Malt Edition, um, you all know how much I love the Rare Malt. Um, it's a goal of mine to try as many bottles as I can this lifetime. Um, and unfortunately every passing year it just gets worse and worse because it gets more and more expensive and rarer. Um, as you can see I've got a bit of a strange um, lid there from SMWS because Rare Malts tend to break corks all the time. Um, so it's got to replace the cork when you can. So um, as you can see as well, I'm using my butt plug glass. The butt plug glass is excellent for nosing because um, it just narrows everything down and really gets you um, nosing well. This rare malt is a 25 year old Milburn. This rare malt is a 25 year old Milburn, 61.9%. Bottle number 1283, God knows how many bottles have bottled, but regardless, it's going to be less and less every passing year. 1975 bottled um, 25 years later. Now, 2001, October 2001, Melbourne is a closed distillery. Okay, it's a closed distillery. So what we're essentially doing here is you're joining me on a time machine. We are time traveling back to the era of Melbourne, which is no longer. Okay, um, as always, it's always interesting, when you have closed distilleries, everyone goes crazy um, and buys them and shits the bed because they're closed. But, you know, there's a reason why they were closed, whether they're crap or not, um, they didn't need them anymore and they shut them down. Wherever the reason is, it's always great to go and time travel back to a distillate in 1975, um, a lesser industrial, uh, industrial and lesser marketed portion of single malt and whiskies. Rare malts tend to be about, well, I mean, in my assumption and in my thought, it tends to be about what the blender and distiller think the bottling should be at the time when they bottled it and distilled it. Now, a lot of whiskies today are very tame, very mellow, very smooth, um, basically a little bit boring, but rare malts is never boring. So let's get nose in. Candle smoke, soot, a minerally glassiness. The glassiness and minerality could be from the old bottle effect of the bottle leaching into the spirit, or it could just be the style, the coal that they used, but it's got distinct smokiness, distinct glassiness and minerally note to it. I can get some salinity in that. Hmm. It's a little fruity, earthy, so I'm getting a little bit of fruit, I'm getting overripe apricot, a fruit basket, some unripe kiwi. Green apple, peppermint, menthol wet stones in a hot day leather <laughs> leather, some wet leather wet soil is what I'm getting as well, I'm getting some wet soil you know when you open a bag of compost um, or a bag of soil from the garden store I'm getting some of that as well and I'm getting an earthiness that's distinctive I'm thinking raw cacao and so I'm getting some acetone, bandage glue, nail polish type of intensity and strength. But I mean, the nose is just intense. And I'm getting a faint hint of diesel fumes as well in the far, just in the far, far back of my nose. Liquid sugar, simple syrup. Vanilla and sickly coconut. I'm assuming this is predominantly bourbon, bourbon cask. Wow, the nose is just super complex of a full. Oh, I'm excited. We're getting some fruit paste. But the nose of this is just vibrant. It's, it's just zesty. Let's get sipping. Oh. Oh, rare malt is just so, so forward. 
nothing, no bottling out there I have ever experienced in terms of a line is so consistent than a rare malt bottling of grabbing your mouth and tongue, holding it like this, like, you know, like just a, it's like someone putting their fist in your mouth, like, you know, just punching your palate in the best way possible. It's just exciting. I mean, rare malts just excite the shit out of me because it's just so, so good, um, so compelling. That is an assault on the palate in the best way possible. Mmm. Oily. <coughs> <coughs> Inhaled some whiskey. Mmm. Oily, viscous, toasted wood. Toasted marshmallow, a fruitiness, a strong menthol taste. Peppermint and menthol is just cooling my mouth and my throat. Oh wow. I'm getting that slight dirtiness, that earthiness mixed with a smokiness. It's fantastic. Mmm. Wet gravel on a hot day on the mid to back palette. I'm getting lemon juice. Actually, I will change that. A lemon and honey. You know, some some water, some warm water with some honey, just a field honey, and a squeeze of lemon or two. I'm getting that but adding 61.9% alcohol. It is just amazing, it's just amazing. The oak, it's not overly oaked, but it's definitely quite a prominent oaking to it. And I do believe this is predominantly bourbon hog's head, especially back at the time when, you know, they were using probably better quality barrels, who knows, I don't know, but just the flavor that it's given us so much. It's not smooth at all. It is, it is a little rough around the edges, it is a little rustic, it's, like, it's a little rustic. Actually, it's a lot rustic. I take it back, it's a lot rustic. Mmm. Oh. Smoke in the back palate. You can definitely get that smoke. It's a floral note to it right now that I'm tasting, but I can't put my finger on what flower it is. I'm thinking chrysanthemum tea, chrysanthemum tea, chrysanthemum tea, shall I say? Or is it chrysanthemum or chrysanthemum? I don't know, you tell me. Chrysanthemum or chrysanthemum? Um, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum tea, um, you know, um, as a child, it's like a Chinese herbal remedy that I have chrysanthemum tea. I'm getting some of that aftertaste on there. But man, it is, it's starting to develop some herbal note to it as well. Mm. Hint of rosemary. Wow, that is fantastic. Look, I, I love rare malts. Um, cigar pairings with this rare malt, hard to say. Um, I would say don't. I would say don't. I would say have a couple of drams of this at the start of the evening. Sit on it, sip it, taste it, appreciate it, and then move on to something else. I mean, you want to taste this 100%, right? You don't want to be eating anything spicy beforehand. You don't want to be smoking anything beforehand. You just want to have this, take a first sip to calibrate the palate, and then appreciate the rest. Wow, I love red malts. Have you had this before? Let me know your thoughts. And um, until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink. Cheers.